Fuck doubles. Back out in the goddamn season room, we got fucking Elcat back. And that's the new name, corner fucking Athnar. He says the name should be Elcat. So what do you guys think of the new fucking name? Oh, uh, that sounded pretty good. He, he came in and gave it a uh, in-person suggestion. So I said, yeah, we'll fucking run with it. And Elcat thought it was a pretty good idea. So back here has been a while, goddammit. And uh, we're going over the video. After age 30, only 15 and 20% of you will remain. She kind of did go pretty over the comments, and uh, yeah, it seemed like a bunch of uh, older devils yep. giving their um, personal defense, I guess, saying uh, how long they've been into it and their age and shit like that. And uh, so it's kind of funny, got them all talking, and there was a 225 comments, so fucking shitload. So let's see what kind of fucking questions. I didn't really look at the questions. Lindsay went fucking digging. Get this goddamn fucking camera, make sure no audio's fucked up out here, as we know that happens. Yep. So uh, hopefully that's good right there. So, All right, um, so ooh. we got a bunch of people just, yeah, saying their age when they started listening to music. Very cool. I went, I read a whole bunch of them. It's awesome to see that a lot of you guys started when you were 10, 11, 12, and you're in your 40s. Some of you are in your 50s, still listening to the metal, still loving it. So this is a question from Thousand Pound. What album do you have the most copies of in any format? Also, I became fascinated with metal at 10 years old and still going strong at 41 with no end in sight. I don't know which one I have the most of, but the first one coming to my mind is actually not even a metal record. I showed it on camera, which would be my favorite punk album. It's probably Misfits Walk Among Us. I have, what, like maybe seven different colored vinyls of that. And that wasn't super intentional. I think they just... uh as I just came across and they were at a convenient time, you know, and just, just pick them up here and there. Because I don't like, I'm not a person where I'll really search out a different version every single time. Uh, for some stuff I do, but not to that extent. I think it was just, it just kind of worked out that way. But I definitely, there's other ones where I own uh, multiple versions. Like I, like I showed, like Repulsion Horrified and shit like that. I own a few different version LPs, a few different CDs, a picture disc. But um, the one that I probably have, because it's, it's like, I think it's like six or seven, uh, different color variants on Walk Among Us, then I definitely have a picture disc and a CD. So eight to nine versions on it. So that's the one that's coming to my mind. There might be something that has a beat, but that's the first one that I'm, that's the main one coming to my mind. So probably that. All right. This is Morgoth192. Question, Jay Binkles. What do you think of the band Summoning? Love it or hate it? In regards to this video, I've grown to like more bands, like the goth bands, All Dog Likes, as I'm reaching 30. I find myself going back and forth with between metal, goth, post-punk. It just depends on what I feel like listening to. Yeah, Summoning, I don't really know. No, I've definitely listened to them. It's funny. Somebody asked me about them in particular, too. Well, fucking over 15 years ago now. And my stance was, I know I listened to them then. Mm -hmm. I remember being like black metal. A lot of their uh, stuff is not even in English, if I remember correctly. Some of their own titles and songs. Yeah. I can't even think exactly where they're from. It'd have to be, I'd go back and listen to it, but I definitely listened to them, and I didn't pick it up. So I obviously didn't think it was, you know, that great of whatever the time. But um, I wouldn't even be able to compare them to anybody who would have say, it'd, it'd be a new listen at this point. But uh, when I did listen to them, I didn't pick it up. And especially at that time, it's still the same now. I pretty much always, if it was something I really liked, I would have picked it up, or I would have... Uh, Put it in my back of my mind to definitely to have picked up, which I never did. So that kind of gives that answer. But there, there is a possibility I'd go back and listen. Plus, I know they have at least a few different albums. Uh, Hell's has gotten them several times. So maybe there's maybe I heard an album that I didn't think much of, and they have one that I think is fucking great. That definitely, because uh, like when I, I told the story about Satanic Warmaster, when I first heard them, I didn't like them at all. Because their earlier albums, I still don't like. I thought that band got better. So if I just keep the same theories, like when I heard like Satanic Warmaster, like let's say Overblown or whatever, which I haven't listened to that one in a while, but I recall not liking, I didn't start liking them until I heard the Karelian Satanist Madness. That was the first one I liked. Um, but if I didn't hear something I liked, I probably would have never rechecked out and like, I would just have the stance, oh, I'm never being black and care about. So there is always that possibility. But for, I know I probably only heard one thing by summoning and I just remember, yeah, it just wasn't like something I picked up, so... But who knows, if I see in the shop again, because like I said, somebody specifically asked me about them a long time ago, and uh, it's just funny someone else is asking, because it's not a band that you hear too many people bring it up. Maybe I'm not going to see the shop. We got, yeah, we, we got some like two weeks ago, yeah, and put they it all sold. No, they sold. Okay, yeah. so if I see it come through, I'll we get it. We got like them. three copies, I think, of each of Yeah, we've had them uh, several times, and yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'll definitely put it back on the player. Yeah. So. All right, this is just a com comment that I love from Dinkins. 
it always comes. That dog a hug for me. Um, this comment section looks like a message board from an old folks home. <laughs> I thought we, I thought that we were the old, there were only a few of us old doubles. Guess I was wrong. And I love his hashtag. It's elderly metal. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Like I said, a lot of guys, uh, like I said, a lot don't last, but there's a lot to do. And when, uh, since this is YouTube, it technically has a worldwide audience. You see how many are left, which is, there's quite a few, but I'm sure the number that, uh, left disbanded, turned their back on it. I'm just even a higher number, but yeah, there's always going to be a shitload left standing, which is great to see. That's awesome. um, all right. Uh, this is Eric Victoris. Nearing the 50s and still into extreme metal, worst tastes are getting more worst tastes are getting more brutal as the years pass, goddammit. Beer and metal. Question. Bald and goddammit, J Dog, considering you are Really into bodybuilding. I wonder if you like alcoholic drinks, and if yes, which one is your favorite? Second question: Have you listened to um, Sac Sacrum Sacramentary Abolishment? Abolishment. I, I definitely never listened to. Them. I definitely seen the name. Uh, it's the, the, the name alone. If I remember a cover looking like it, reminds me of probably like maybe like Have a Hedge, Pro Fanatica stuff. Maybe it doesn't sound anything like it, but that's the vibe I got that it would be. But I did not listen to it. Uh, but I'll be able to bear it in mind. As far as alcohol, yeah, I mean, I drink some alcohol. I mean, within reason. I'm not. I'm definitely not a person that goes out and gets smashed. I never, I just never liked that feeling, um, especially even at the time being. I don't like how it feels in the very next day, and especially yeah. now. Say the last five years, one of the biggest things I hate the very next day is that my body just aches, like all my joints and shit. And I'm sure it has something to do with dehydration, and it's probably reducing like the synovial fluid in the joints, and the fact that you're training and stuff like that. They're like. Basically, the rule of thumb is, and like with bodybuilding training, you kind of want as much fluid or water retention and blood in the joint area before you go into like your heavy lifts. Otherwise, they just ache. And if you kind of like were drinking alcohol before, it's like it makes it hell. You're just like just getting out of bed. You're like, fuck, my knees hurt, my elbows hurt, my hips hurt, my low back hurts. I just never liked that feeling. So, but yeah, I like some as far as my favorites. Um, I don't know if I really have fucking favorites. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm not like a. I'm not really like a Budweiser, Bud Light guy, but I'm we not. We kind of talked about this. You you like red wine. You yeah, like but some beers. Like, but I'm also not a snob either. If I'm at a party and somebody's supplying it, let's say all they had was Budweiser, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those snobs. Like I'm not drinking that. I would drink it. You know what I mean? But it's not something I'd go out and buy on my own. You know what I mean? But I'm pretty laid back with it, and I'm respectable if that's what somebody had and that's what they're supplying. Well, if their party, that's what they have. They're supplying it. I mean, I'll drink it. You know. And if you know me at all, you know I like to drink. I don't care what it is. So. All right, this is Albert Market Thick PR. J Dog, what? J Dog, why has the Florida death metal scene lost its powers? Well, I mean, haven't all of them kind of lost their powers in a sense? I mean, I guess Sweden's still kind of going strong, but at the same time, it, for the most part, they're kind of a one trick pony. Um, for the most part, I mean, there's other stuff, I mean, like that's come out that's definitely different. Um, so it's not just all Swedish death metal as it was in the you know early '90s, but plus Sweden really supports their their music, their so band. I've, I've heard that yeah. from people there. I don't know how 100 percent true that is, but that's what I've heard. Seems like it's probably. But true. as far as Florida, I mean, it's kind of like the old saying, you know, all good things come to an end, right? You know, it can't last forever. You know, when you're thinking the scene, you're thinking probably like '87 to about '92, '92, '93, when Florida was reigning strong as far as tons of bands coming out there from and very. Not just any bands, you know, very, very influential bands, mm -hmm. whether it been from Death, Massacre, to Cannibal Corpse, and Love and Creation, Monstrosity, you know, um, you know, shitloads of bands. But yeah, all things, I mean, I, I think part of that is just kind of a, I don't want to call it a fluke, but uh, just right place at the right time. And it had to be somebody, right? And that's not going to always last forever. And especially now, you can almost do anything from any type of uh, country, any style of great music, because of the reach you have with uh, the, the internet, you know, which didn't exist back then. So it's not a location is going to be. doesn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. a little irrelevant. You can, right. you can be a fucking your garage in goddamn Columbia. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not so, really trading tapes anymore. Yeah. So, so I, that'd be my guess. So. All right. This is Harry Quinn. j Dog. did you ever rock spiked studded bracelets or any other spiked accessories? If so, have do you still have them? No, the cl right. the only kind of thing I did was on my jacket, my metal jacket, uh, that which I showed on camera. Go and watch that goddamn video. Did it what, three, four months ago. Yeah. That had spikes all over it, and I also had some uh, boots 
that had spikes, chains, and they had some inverted, cr inverted cross uh, spikes on them. You used to wear a lot of necklaces. Yeah. But as far as just like uh, like gauntlets and bracelets, shit like that, no, never did. Um, so just the jacket and the boots would be in the piece of it. But uh, I think like the uh, gauntlets and shit on stage and bands do them, I think that they're very fitting and cool. Very cool. So I definitely think that they look metal and that they. Uh, some of my favorites are uh, Dawn of the Dead. I yeah, love it. Still wears yeah, that's the worst now. Yeah. So. I love it. Uh, all right. This is Elvis is God. Question for J-Dog. Why do some bands leave the label? Denouncement Pyre comes to mind. Now they're on Agonia. Well, uh, I'm not going to uh, talk directly about deals with each band because I don't know. Like, I personally don't give a shit, but I don't know if they care. Uh, but I will say this. Agonia, he's definitely, in the last few years, been making, a, I guess, a comeback in a sense. Not that he ever left, but I noticed he's been... What should I want to say? Yeah, maybe he's willing to fork out the dough for bands, which I guess is cool for him. Kudos. I don't know if he's taking. I don't know if he's just doing that well, or if he's taking a loan, if he's taking risks. I don't really know. But um, because he's been around quite a time, and we traded with him and wholesale with him for for years, and it just seems like he's in the last five years he's getting way more aggressive. Maybe just because now he can afford to, and he couldn't back then. I don't know what the right. exact reason is. But um, there's other bands that have talked that uh, we dealt with that went with him, or vice versa. And I, I know he's done some pretty good offers. I'm not even, not that I would say the offer, but uh, not surprised, I'm not sure uh, who, what he even uh, offered them. But um, there's no hard feelings. I mean, some of it is, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is. Do what's best for you. Yeah. For your family. You know, if you're going to get more money, then I think we, you know. But some of it too is like uh, some of the guys, they want to, uh, in the underground, it's not even about money or whatever. It's the beyond multiple different underground labels just kind of uh because each label has kind of like a little bit of their own fan base so it's bringing different you know who people that order from hell's headbangers may not order from agonia and the people that have ordered from agonia may not from hell's headbangers you know right. what I mean? especially because him being a poland so it's just and maybe a little bit more of a niche audience that they gets over there that now a few more eyeballs maybe if it's another 20 people that now found out about denouncement pyre and now right. diehard fans because I like maybe that's their uh, mindset too i know some guys do think like that but reasons like that. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a ton of various reasons. But uh, personally, yeah, it's never hard feelings on my end. Whenever it happens, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. And sometimes they come back. That's yeah, Profanatic Pro 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 was one of them. They left for what was that? Uh, was it Season of the Mist? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And then, but yeah, we still work with them. So. Right. Uh, All right. This is Dust Sandwich. What? What's up, J Dog? Or what does J Dog think of the air punchers in the metal scene? All those karate kids in the pit. I mean, whatever. I don't really care what somebody does. I can't say I've seen too too much of it. When you see it, it seems like it's a little bit more of a if you want to call it a bigger show. I don't even know if I call it that because I don't go to too many big shows. Well, I don't go to any big shows. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you might see it at like a show of a, like a DSI size. I mean, it looks a little silly and it looks a little bit more of. Um, I guess more of a hardcore crowd, deathcore crowd. I mean, it's not what I would ever do, but I guess I'd rather see that kids excited and right. doing their thing than just a bunch of fucking idiots standing there and don't yeah. care. So I guess that really happened. It's like when I, I don't know if you talked about it, but when we saw Spider, they there were a bunch of young kids in the pit. I I thought it was great. Well, I okay. No, I, I understand. I'm just I'm yeah, just yeah. saying that. So um, I this is there was a question for, i don't know like a long time ago but somebody asked like when you were younger were you in the pit at all like have very you ever days, yeah, very answered early that yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah i'm in mean, the very early days the yeah. three of you were like always in the pit right i definitely did and so did eric i don't know if chase did i can't remember him being i'm sure he did in the very early i'm sure he did mm -hmm. but for sure me and eric definitely did at a few points but we were never like crazy i mean especially me i mean we we're all you know, naturally really skinny, smaller guys, but especially because I'm the shortest one, so I'm short and skinny, especially that. So, I mean, I kind of get kicked around pretty easily. So I wasn't overly aggressive about getting into it because, you know, I didn't need to get my ass handed to me, you know? <laughs> so I wasn't too enthusiastic about that. But, uh, but no, I definitely have, you know what I mean? Now you just stand there with your arms crossed. Arms crossed or arms down. Yep. Whatever's comfortable. Not moving at all. All right, this is Lance Anderson. Do you ever watch YouTube? If so, do you have a favorite channel? Also, on the topic of being online, do you ever play any video games? Don't play any video games. My uh, system of choice was Sega Genesis, which we still have the old system, but I haven't played it in years. 
Uh, but if I was to play video games, it'd be that. All this new shit, PS25 or whatever the fuck they're on, that shit gives me a headache and I literally can't even figure it out. I'm just, I'm just literally confused. I have nothing against it and guys love it, whatever. Um, I just personally can't figure it out and I literally get dizzy, like motion sickness watching it. So I don't. And then, confusing. Uh, what we got here, first question, what did he ask? Um, sorry. Oh, YouTube channels. Yeah. Yeah, I don't watch any metal. Everything I watch is actually bodybuilding related. But you or, watch bodybuilding YouTube. Yeah. 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 Um, so whether it be podcasts or whether yeah. it be uh, picking brains, people giving their uh, anecdotal evidence, I guess you could say, on shit and uh, the competitions, people doing con contest reviews. And that's what I, yeah, I don't, I don't watch any metal related shit just because uh, one reason is I don't really care what the opinion of anyone else is. I'd rather make up my own, listen to it. And I've always been that way. And another thing is I'm around it 24 seven. So if it comes to us, I'll just check it out myself. And other stuff is I, I know so many people in the scene and they know my taste. If I wanted to know about a band or that's, I'll, I'll just literally ask them. Like yeah. if I need to know about a demo or something, I'll literally just contact my buddy Dan Murrow, who fucking knows way more about metal than even me. Yeah. So I'll just ask him and he, either he's going to know the answer or he's going to be able to get the that. answer. Yeah. So I don't really need to go YouTube it to find out. I'll, I'll just yeah. literally email or text him. You know what I mean? So shit like that. So it's not that I can see why. And I'm glad people watch metal YouTube channels. Fuck, that's what I'm doing. But I just... For me, it just wasn't, I just didn't really have any interest, I guess you could say. This is from Pa Father, I think. Uh, hey, J-Dog, I never really hear you talk about obituary. What are your thoughts on them? Um, obituary, that was one of the first death metal bands I heard, probably around fifth, sixth, seventh band. I love them. I mean, I like, uh, my favorite album is Cause of Death, followed by Slowly We Rock. I like Incomplete. It is a little bit on the boringer side, but I do like it. It's a good album. Uh, World Demise. I didn't really like it. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's, it was definitely weak. I did like, because uh, then after World Demise, I liked Back from the Dead. Uh, yeah, the rap track at the end was a little fucking ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but I got to get credit where credit is due. Not that I ever wanted that they were the first band to ever do that, which, I mean, not that it was a good move, but, I mean, they were the first. Whether they're experimental with it, whether it's a horrible idea, they were the first band to do it. Not that that's good kudos, but they were the first if you want to take credit for something. Um, but I, as a whole, I do like that. I mean, like the, the opening track, Threatening Skies, I think is fantastic. And so I thought Back from the Dead was way better than World of Eyes. And then, did we see them? Oh, shit. That was with the Midnight? Was that with Midnight? I think, was it 2017 or 18? 16, 17, yeah. somewhere on yeah. that. What, what was that? Was that with Creator, Obituary Midnight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. was? At yeah. Uh, the House of Blues. It was a really good show. Yeah. And I was actually, uh, when I saw Vax, the, uh, when I saw Obituary, probably that was years prior. But when I saw Obituary, I was just, Pleasantly surprised that uh, it sounded pretty good. Yeah. Um, now, when they did the comeback albums, I, I think I have an LP still. I will say I recall liking, I, will, I probably listened to only like three times in my life. The first comeback album, I believe it was the first one. Somebody correct me. No, they did an EP before that. But the first comeback record I heard, I think it's the first one, was the Executioner song. Because they were initially called Executioner. Which, by the way, Executioner, that Metal Up Your Ass demo, that's fucking great, too. I have a bootleg seven-inch picture disc of that that came out probably about 15 years ago or so. That's fucking great. So they did Executioner's, was it Executioner's song or Executioner's Return? I think it's Executioner's Return, maybe? Whatever. Uh, I remember liking that album. And then everything after that, I can't say I've heard a lot of comeback albums. I remember not liking. There was an album that Relapse did about three years ago or so, or at least that's when I listened. And I fucking thought it was horrible. I thought John Tardy's vocals sounded like, I'm like, this, this, this sounds like shit. I mean, he sounds like a weak thrash singer. And that was one of the big things I made mean, a was John Tardy's vocals. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, on the first two records, I mean, his vocals, they don't sound like anybody. Like, literally nobody. That's why I get a kick out of her. Someone like, whether it be my parents or just old people that have metal saying, all that shit sounds the same. Yeah. Put Cannibal Corpse next to fucking Obituary. Like, what do you, like, you gotta be deaf to think. Maybe you don't like them, that's fine. But sounds the same. That's that's literally you're either deaf or retarded. Like that's the, they don't sound the same at all. So, but everybody growling, you know, whether it been Frank Bolin or fucking Chris Barnes or whoever, even Corpse Grinder. Not that I think any of those guys sound the same. Or Will Rom or, or Ross Dolan. It was all growling vocals, and John, his vocals were they weren't growling, but they weren't black metal. It was like that snarls, but it was still death metal. So it was, I thought they were awesome. You know what I mean? And then you had. You know, David Vincent on Ultras of Madness. He was in that in between too. It doesn't sound, they're awesome death metal vocals, but they don't sound like anybody. So, yeah, obituary, early obituary shit. Awesome. Love it. Huge fan. You know? But yeah, later comeback albums, most of it's John. Right. Uh, this is Ricky Jones. 
J Dog, did you like the latest Arch Goat Worship the Eternal Darkness? Have you even listened to it? No. We'll make this last goddamn one, too, because we're at the 20-minute mark. Funny, uh, Athnar just came down to the shop again yesterday, bought a couple records, and shot the shit. Gave El Cat a new name. And uh, he bought an Arch Goat record. And I was like, oh, I'm surprised you like I was like, I guess I could see you like an Arch Goat, but didn't know. I was like, see it. He's like, do you like Arch Goat? I was like, my, my take on Arch Goat. I do like Arch Goat. But to me, I'm like, the first thing I heard was the Jesus Spawn demo. And that's because I'm so cabal. And I was there because I wasn't. I was fucking, what was that? Jesus Spawn demo was that 91, I believe. I was six years old. So no, I didn't get the time. I just so happened to hear that first. Uh, I remember how I heard it. Not going to really delve into how kind of a long story. Nonetheless, that's what I heard first. Thought it was good and great. And I'm like, this sounds different than anything I knew at the time. And then I heard the Angel Cut EP. And I like that. And then when they did the comeback, it was just all the same shit again and again and again and again. So I was just kind of like, it's all good, but it all sounds the same. So to me, it's kind of like I told Athenar. To me, Archgoat was kind of like this. Want to need something by Archgoat? Close your eyes. Yeah, I'll take that one, and you're good because it's all the same shit. Um, now, granted, I understand if somebody like just loves that sound so much they want an album after. I get it because Mortician's like that. You know what I mean? Mortician, it's a, it's a one-trick pony. Yeah. Uh, but I like every album. But I always preferred that sound, I guess. So I get it why somebody was excited for a new Arch Goat, and that's their favorite preferred sound. So I, I totally get it. But for me, I was like, yeah, I'm good with the Jesus Spawn demo. I have that on that split uh, bootleg LP with Beharit, which that came out like pushing 20 years ago now. And then I have a 12-inch picture disc of uh, Angel Cunt. Oh, and no, actually, I do. I have the uh, that Eons of whatever was a compilation of stuff. It has the uh, Jesus Spawn demo on there. I believe Angel has a bunch of compiles, and I have that too. Those are the three things I own by Arch Goat, and I was good with that. And stuff here and there, I'll listen to it, but I'm like, yeah, it's all same, old, same, old. So I'm good with that. And, but if somebody's like, that's my favorite band, which I know people that literally say that, that's my favorite band, I totally understand. Well, it like, works for us. Yeah. So I'm good with what I got. So that's it for this one, Devils. Hopefully the audio came out, goddamn it, okay? We'll see when we post it, right? Right. And uh, you know what to do. Any questions for from fucking me or Cat? Let me know about the new name. What do you think, goddamn it? Suck, shitty, whatever. Throw it in the comments, goddamn it. We'll see you tomorrow. Later.